Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isratel here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic is fatigue indicators and how to use them for strength and or hypertrophy training. Here is the thing. If you want a ton more detail that I'm going to give in this relatively short video, just a grand tour, there's an article on the internet. I believe it is on Juggernaut Training Systems, which is an excellent site, by the way, a very good friend, Chad Wesley Smith runs it. Their YouTube is amazing. So I'd absolutely subscribe to that, or at least give some videos, some looks. And on their website, there's an article called Fatigue Indicators and how to use them. It's by myself and uh, Dr. James Hoffman, also of RP. You've probably seen him on the webinar and a bunch of other videos. We wrote that together a while ago. It's aged pretty well. That's the super fine point detail. So here I'm going to give a grand tour, but if you have any specific questions, of course you can shoot them into the description and somebody may very well answer them. Or sorry, shoot them into the comments and edit the description on the video. But uh, at the end of the day, I think it would be really, really cool if you guys want to check out that, that article. Every time you click on that article, um, uh, the Russian CIA gets a, a cent or whatever. So you're going to be tipping the scales of global balance into evil. But before we do that, let's check out fatigue indicators and how to use them. There are three categories of fatigue indicators, basically things, signs in your training that you know fatigue is accumulating to the point where it's time to back off, whether it's through recovery sessions, light sessions, technique sessions, deloads, more days off, more food, something to handle the fatigue because it's getting out of hand. That fatigue out of hand point is the point we're looking for, but we have three sort of time points around that that we can be intelligent about. There are leading indicators that start to red flag before fatigue actually hits you in a way that interferes with productive training, because that's our point. So we have leading indicators that happen before. We have concurrent indicators that tell you like, now is when it's probably time to deload really soon. And then we have lagging indicators that either tell you, okay, it's real close slash here, the time to deload, and or if you feel a lot of them together or perceive a lot of them together, there's a decent chance that like you're overreaching now and now is the time to pull back because then you get a functional overreaching super compensation boost and then you get better. But if you ignore the lagging indicators after this sort of peak of fatigue has occurred, any more fatigue on top of that, if you just keep going and don't address the fatigue, could land you into non-functional overreaching, which means you the super compensatory effect just brings you back up to normal or worse, or it could start you on the road if you're really for weeks and weeks ignore it to overtraining and all these other really bad things, injury and so, so on and so forth. You don't want any of that. So here's the deal. Let's start with leading indicators first. Some of these leading indicators are also causes, but if you're using them to cause higher fatigue, then they're also indicators that higher fatigue is coming because like, you know, X yields Y, right? So here's the deal. Your previous days, either yesterday's or several days uh, prior to that, nutrition is a leading indicator of higher fatigue. If your nutrition sucked in the last several days, like you missed tons of meals, you ate way too few calories, but you're still training super hard, you are going to have a fatigue bump soon, okay? Plain and simple. Right? And that fatigue bump could be large. Next one is several previous days, stress and recovery management. Let's say you spent several days fighting with your parents, or you spent several days like worrying about if you're going to get into college and that letter hasn't come in the mail or what the hell is going on, or you haven't slept a ton, so on and so forth. Your fatigue will be skyrocketing soon, even, even if you don't know, if you sort of feel normal now. These leading indicators, remember, it's never one for one. There's never a guarantee that, okay, this indicator is coming, so fatigue is going to be high, but watch out. Okay, they're like little red indicator lights in like a, a submarine. They start to go off. It might not be the end of the world, but you're going to look at them shits because they might be telling you something. Next one is the previous week's training, volume and intensity. So if in the last week you crushed it, don't expect fatigue to just be blah this week. It's going to go up because fatigue is cumulative, right? Let's say you were doing a normal program and you had some friends visit you for a week and stay with you and they're all muscle building friends. So <laughs> muscle building friends, TM, right? And you go into the gym, you fuck crush it. You know how you you're around your boys, around your ladies, you get after it. So the next week they all leave and you're alone and it's maybe another week of training, no deload. Don't expect to be like 100% hunky-dory. Like that shit's gonna mess you up, right? So know that when you make a huge inroad into training volume and intensity and so on and so forth, you're gonna be paying for it in a delayed fashion. Just don't let it surprise you, right? 
Next one, these are actual uh, things you can perceive. They're not things you are doing. They're not causes of fatigue. They are indicators of fatigue in a pure sense, okay? Technical coordination and learning proficiency. This is easy to do, especially if you play another sport. Uh, like for example, I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well as hypertrophy and strength training, and mostly hypertrophy training now. I know that when I'm starting to feel real sloppy in Jiu Jitsu, learning techniques or executing them, I'm still good for, hyper I'm not overreached on hypertrophy or strength mechanisms, but it's coming, okay? Because uh, technique, ability to learn and to execute is a very, very fatigue sensitive. So your fatigue is climbing, it pings your technical ability first, and then it'll ping your ability to add muscle and or get stronger later. But it's not that much later, a week or two later. So when your technique starts to fall apart, it's okay if you're not a technique athlete, you just kind of know. If you just feel like sort of uncoordinated, even at the gym, you just feel less athletic, even though you're still hitting PRs and stuff, just know that that might be an indicator that your fatigue is gonna be really high really soon. Another one, this one you can test. We use it a lot with uh, athletes that are not physique athletes, like sport performance athletes, jump height. Okay, jump height, uh, because speed and explosiveness is again, more sensitive to fatigue than strength and hypertrophy, then uh, what ends up happening is if your jump height starts to crest and come down, uh, it's probably a, a chance that you're uh, excessively fatigued soon and that it's gonna be time to back off. So now if you're training athletes, that are explosive athletes and their training is explosive, this, when jump height is starting to fall off, that's not a leading fatigue indicator, that's a concurrent fatigue indicator, it's already happening, okay? But for strength and hypertrophy, explosiveness is not a requisite and you can still pass the point of fatigue where, hyper, where explosiveness starts to fall off, there's still more volume and intensity you can add and more fatigue in which it's productive to train. So you don't have to stop, but just know it's coming soon if you're training for strength and hypertrophy. Next. Concurrent indicators. How do you know you're experiencing fatigue now? Because you may have a very legitimate question of like, okay, uh, do I have too high of fatigue right now to continue to train productively? In strength training, it's pretty easy. We'll see why in a sec. In hypertrophy training, it's not immediately intuitive, but we'll explain in a bit. So first is bar uh, movement velocity. If you're not moving weights as fast as you were, it probably means that, especially weights you're used to, like you get under 315 as your last warm for the squat and you're grinding it, it's slow, you're like, Ugh, feel like I have a lot of fatigue. Now that may next set may go well, but it may not. And even if you're in working sets, the bar speed is really low and you have to really grind, chances are your fatigue is pretty high and it's pretty soon time to back off, right? Next one, and this is a bit subjective, but if you're an advanced trainee and you're honest with yourself, you can get really good at this, is what we call bar weight feeling or perception of effort, right? Like if you unrack 225 and you're usually like, all right, sweet. Unrack 225 and you're like, Ugh. And even if your velocity is good, you're like, dude, that felt heavy as fuck. Eh, five times out of 10, no big deal. The next set feels fine, everything is great. But the other five times out of 10, it's a sign that maybe, you know, maybe your fatigue is, is rising, right? The ultimate sign comes next, and that is actual performance. So in strength, it's really easy. As soon as you undershoot your PR that you were trying to hit, you're underperforming, right? And maybe that's due to fatigue. Maybe it's a bad day. So you come in later that week and try the same movement pattern. Like front squats sucked Monday. If squats, high bar back squats suck again Thursday, you probably have excessive fatigue. It's not just a one-time thing, right? Reps per set versus capability load versus reps versus uh, your ability to do them versus RIR, for example, in the gym for hypertrophy training is the gold standard for how to measure fatigue. So for example, if you hit 315 for sets of 10 roughly last week, and then this week you hit 320 for sets of 10, like you're good to go. You're still getting stronger. Awesome. If you hit 325 this week and it's a set of 10, then eight, then seven, seven, six, like, ah, definitely underperformed. Okay, why? I'm not sure, it could be cumulative fatigue, maybe not. Now, if you have all this other stuff going on and leading indicators happened a week ago, you're pretty sure it's cumulative fatigue, but maybe you just have that. You try it again later in the later in the week, say muscle group, right? Or even more telling a different muscle group and you still underperform. Like you try, you know, later that week, you're supposed to leg press 450 for sets of 10 and you got like a set of eight and then six and three and then you were like, I can't even, I'm not gonna be able to one or end this. Like any kind of fall off in performance, it doesn't have to be big, any fall off of performance where you're really trying your hardest is almost always indi indicative of excessive fatigue and a time to back off, deload, and then push back up again, right? 
Lastly, and this one can be done for folks that have a hard time telling how they're performing, maybe like a, somebody like a wrestler, how are you performing? It's tough to tell is there's, you go against the same guys in training all the time and you don't know if they're going hard or you're going easy, so on and so forth. Grip strength can be used in that circumstance. So if you have a, a gripper, a grip dynamometer, they're really super cheap and you just test your grip strength maybe every day in the morning or something like that and warm up a little bit and test your grip or like three times a week. If your grip strength starts to, uh, starts to go down, that probably means you're under recovering. Not for sure, but it's definitely another piece of the puzzle. Lastly, and I do mean lastly, are the lagging indicators. Again, these indicate that there's a good chance, not 100%, that you're already well into a very high fatigue state that is no longer optimally productive for hypertrophy and strength training. And now is the time, like now, now, like today or tomorrow, not like in a week, to deload, all right, or to take an active rest phase or at least some recovery sessions, something to back away in the fatigue. Here we go. Heart rate variables. People ask this question all the time. Like, what about HRV? What about all these all this heart rate stuff? Uh, they work, right? Except they don't work for every individual all the time, so they're better used on teams. And also, a lot of times, by the time they're notably off, you could have told anyone in the world you were crushed. Like, you're weak into shitting the bed and hitting zero PRs and being sore everywhere and your joints all fucked up. Your, your HRV app is like, hey, you might be overdoing it. You're like, thanks, okay? But... Not always, and if your heart rate variability is off, it could mean nothing, but if the other signs are there, then you know it's kind of time. Because sometimes you do a decent week and you sort of hit some decent PRs, but you know it was really tough. You're basically right through it. You could ask like, should I train this next week super hard or should I take a deload? And like during that weekend, your HRV starts to go sort of off the charts and your heart rate monitoring is like, ooh, something's up. You're like, uh, okay, okay. Uh, with this piece of evidence, remember we're using multiple measures at the same time, with this piece of evidence, maybe I'm not gonna push it super hard. Maybe it's time to back off, right? Another one, desire to train. This one can be a leading indicator, a concurrent indicator, and a lagging indicator, but for this video is targeted for super intellectual, hardcore lifters, okay? Folks, motherfuckers like you that want it, okay, that are addicted to training. That's why the fuck you're spending your free time watching dumbass YouTube videos and me ranting about training science, right? Because you want the shit bad. So for you, for your training desire to fall off, some real deep shit has to be happening, and high fatigue is number one culprit. So like, if you are like thinking about going to the gym next week and you've done six incrementally harder uh, weeks and you're like thinking about going to the gym and you're like, ugh, someone like shows you a picture of a hack squat and you're like, no, no, that hurt me last week. Like, show me where it hurt you. You point to your quads. Uh, if that's the case, if you really, ugh, you usually love to train, you're like confused, like you even have to admit it to yourself. Like, do I really not want to go to the gym? What the hell is wrong with me? Well, nine times out of 10, it's going to be high fatigue. And that means your fatigue is already very, very high. Right, and if you're super dedicated, if you're not super dedicated, it's a leading indicator, right, or no indicator at all, because you could always just not want to train. Then, like, probably not watching this video. So, if your desire to train is starting to fall off, and you're a serious lifter, mm, deloading is almost always a good idea of some kind, reducing the volume, intensity, so on and so forth. Mood disturbances. You start to like get catty with people, or like, argh, argh, like that, and you're sort of uncomfortable and anxious all the time. Along with these other factors, can can be a conclusion that you're just really, really uh, pretty overreached. Appetite suppression. Uh, a real big one is like when you're in a hypocaloric diet and you're pretty hungry, and then five weeks into an accumulation phase, you're not hungry anymore, even though you're lowest calories ever. <sighs> Gee whiz, you're probably real deep in the hole, right? And a lot of times your performance and the other metrics reflect this as well. Also happens on mass gaining, and it sucks on mass gaining because it's kind of like a benefit on cutting, which just kind of makes it dangerous because you're like, I can just keep overtraining and I'll never want to eat again and I'll get results, <laughs> except not, right? Because you're going to just uh, spill over and nothing good's going to happen when you quit, right? Or you get hurt. On massing, this is a pretty clear one. Like if your appetite suppression starts to occur and it's just objectively a lot of food, okay, no big deal. It doesn't mean anything. But if it's like food you've eaten before, it's not objectively that much and you're like, I should be able to finish this and your training volume has been climbing and it's really high and you have a lot of these other things going on and your appetite is suppressed and you don't know why, though fatigue is probably why. And it's, and, and it's a weird form of appetite suppression too because you look at food and you're like, I can't eat that. I don't want to eat anything. You kind of shut down. Your body recedes into itself. Not a good sign for sustained training. You definitely want to back off at that point. A lot of times with all these, mood, appetite, come sleep disturbances. Your sleep is just of a low quality. A lot of tossing and turning, a lot of waking up. Not a lot of intervals in the night where you wake up and you're like, oh, I just had like a baller. 
50 hour dream. It seemed like I was in another universe and I felt like I was in the deepest sleep ever. The opposite of that. Like it just, it, it's like the equivalent of like uh, sleeping on a bus or a plane. You slept like that quality in your bed, not good or inability to fall asleep at night. Or you wake up, or this is a really big one. You wake up really early in the morning and you can't go back to sleep. You're just like, <laughs> wake up like vampire style and you're like, ah, and you're already anxious. Not a good sign. Illness. This one comes later or later. Remember, fatigue is cumulative, and when your body is busy trying to fix itself from the fatigue, its immune system is weaker and is more apt to be overwhelmed, short-term at least, by pathogens. So when you get really sick, and this is like a super predictable thing, a lot of athletes in their overreaching prior to big competitions, they'll predictably get like a minor head cold during right when they crest into the overreaching and they start deloading, okay? And a lot of times the illness actually comes after you start to deload. Like you start to deload and then you get sick. You're like, what the fuck? First of all, good news, you don't do hardly anything in a deload. Fine being sick, right? It's the best time to be sick, I'll tell you that, because being sick during your accumulation phase sucks because you're actually training. But uh, that's just how it works. When you finally relax, your sympathetic nervous system and all your catecholamines and fight or flight hormones kind of taper down. And then your body's like, oh, all right, immune system, destroy everything because we've been dealing with this cold virus for four or five days. We haven't been doing shit about. And then you get sick and so on and so forth. So I'll tell you this. If you train harder and harder and harder and you got sick, you ask yourself the question of like, should I keep going? No, no, don't keep going. Deload. Let your body recover and relax. Get over the illness and then you can work back in no problem, right? There's always a long view there. Here's some that you don't want to affect you. These are definitely lagging. Wear and tear injuries. Okay, you were ignoring your body, ignoring your body, ignoring your body. Your knees start to hurt, your right knee. And it's worse and worse and worse. And all these other things happen, but you sort of work through them. And now you have a bum knee. And it's going to take maybe months to fix. Bad idea. The idea of leading indicators and concurrent indicators is to never have to have lagging indicators and because some of them are nasty. Some of them aren't just indicators. They're shit that's happening to you now and you got to deal with it. Deal with it for a while. Lastly, and this is, <laughs> injury is probably least as bad, but this is, I think, tied for worst. Actual competition performance. Okay? You step on the powerlifting platform and you total 50 pounds under your last best, having had tons of these signs. And someone's like, hey, how'd your meat go? And you're like, bad. But I could have told you that was going to happen because I just ignored every sign. I was an idiot. And I came into the meat overreached. The idea behind these fatigue, fatigue indicators and how to use them is note when the leading indicators are arising and be on the lookout. Then when the concurrent indicators start to hit, plan that very soon after, several days after, you begin to reduce fatigue somehow, usually in a deload or taper or active rest or whatever. And then if you ever see lagging indicators in the mix, let's say you're on a Wednesday, you had planned to train Thursday, Friday, Saturday, rest Sunday, and then the next week was a deload. Let's say you're starting to hit a lot of lagging indicators on that Wednesday. There's a good thought process to be had about just starting to deload Thursday because you're deep in the shit. You very likely will be just fine waiting, grinding out and deloading starting Sunday. Sure. But there's an even chance, uh, not a 50-50 chance, but a decent chance that you'll get sick or that you'll start to get wear and tear injuries or just like an acute injury of like, oh, fuck my adductor or some shit like that. Or whatever it is you're prepping for and training for doesn't go as well for you as you want it. That's the stuff we want to avoid. So we want to be keen we want to note this. We don't want to be paranoid like, oh my God, bar weight feeling. Like, uh. Ultimately, your performance in the gym is the number one thing that matters. If you're still hitting PRs, and you're, you're good to go, right? Fundamentally. But you can use more than just that to be know when to ready to deload, know when to deload, and know when, look, maybe the deload is going to have to happen sooner than I planned. Give that some thought. Read that article. We're going to link it in the description. See you next time for the next video.